Everyone can solve the first integral, but can you solve the second integral? That's the problem for today's video. Yeah. Uh, first of all, let me share how we solve the first one. If you, in case if you don't know, so basically uh, we have a standard integral, integral from zero to one of x to the power m minus one, one minus x to the power n minus one dx. This integral over here is actually equals to beta of m comma n, yeah, and uh, this can be written as gamma of m, gamma of n by gamma of m plus n. And if we use that, so this is just equal to beta of one by two comma three by four. And that gives us gamma of 1 by 2, gamma of 3 by 4, by gamma of 1 by 4, yeah. And uh, gamma of 1 by 2 is, uh, it's not 1 by 4, it's 5 by 4, sorry. Now gamma of 1 by 2 is just root pi, yeah. And gamma of 3 by 4 by gamma 5 by 4 is just 1 by 4 times gamma 1 by 4 now this is 4 root pi we can write this as gamma 3 by 4 gamma 3 by 4 by gamma 1 by 4 gamma 3 by 4 now that's gamma n gamma n 1 minus n yeah over here we have gamma 1 by 4 gamma 3 by 4 now this is just gamma n gamma 1 minus n and we know that is just pi by sin n pi yeah that's why uh, this thing over here is 4 root pi now gamma 3 by 4 we don't have a closed form for this but we can find the value and this one is pi by sin pi by 4 so this is 4 root pi by pi and this is 1 by root pi sorry 1 by root 2 and uh, gamma is square 3 by 4 so this is the answer 2 root under 2 by pi and then gamma 3 by 4 whole square okay but in this problem, since there was uh, the numerical limits of integration, we could use beta function. But what if we did not have the numerical limits of integration? What to do in that case? So in that case, uh, we can basically expand this into the binomial series and then use integration term by term. Let's do that. Actually, the power minus 1 by 2. Now, this will just be sum from n equals to 0 to infinity minus 1 by 4 choose n that means I can write this as in the other way so basically minus 1 by 4 choose n and then minus x to the power n okay dx now this can be written as x to the power minus 1 by 2 so I'm going from n equals to 0 to infinity. This can be written as minus 1 by 4, minus 1 by 4, minus 1, minus 1 by 4, minus 2, and goes on to minus 1 by 4, minus n plus 1 by n factorial. Yeah and then minus 1 to the power n x to the power n dx now we can substitute n negative ones to each of them yeah that gives us x to the power minus 1 by 2 so i'm going from n equals to 0 to infinity that will just be 1 by 4 1 by 4 plus 1 1 by 4 plus 2 up to 1 by 4 plus n minus 1 by n factorial and the x to the power n dx 
now we define something known as a uh, rising factorial so basically uh, k sub n this is known as rising factorial symbol and this is k k plus 1 this product up to k plus n minus 1 okay basically you can say this as gamma of k plus n by gamma of k so now using rising factorial symbol uh, we can write this as hmm, sum from n equals to 0 to infinity we can write this as 1 by 4 base n and then by n factorial x to the power n dx now we can interest in sum and integral so we have sum going from n equals to 0 to infinity integral of x to the power n minus 1 by 2 and over here 1 by 4 sub n by n factorial outside the integral because integral is in the world of x and these are just constant sum going from n equals to 0 to infinity 1 by 4 base n by n factorial now this is just x to the power n plus 1 by 2 by n plus 1 by 2 okay so now or n equals to 0 to infinity 1 by 4 choose n by n plus 1 by 2 and then x to the power n plus 1 by 2 by n factorial and uh, oh, what can I do further I can take this uh, root x outside the sum so that this gets simplified okay and further what I can do is so basically now we will try to use the hypergeometric uh, function notation which I have explained in this video basically uh, ordinary hypergeometric function of a b semicolon c semicolon x and this is defined as sum from n equals to 0 to infinity uh, rising factorial of a rising factorial of b by rising factorial of c and then x to the power n by n factorial okay so now uh, here we have n n plus 1 by 2 yeah and that is not in the form of rising factorial we have x to the power n by n factorial but this is not now let me show you something <coughs> so rising factorial of 1 by 2 by rising factorial of 3 by 2 now this will just be 1 by 2 1 by 2 plus 1 up to 1 by 2 plus n minus 2 1 by 2 plus n minus 1 yeah by rising factor of 3 by 2 is 3 by 2 3 by 2 plus 1 up to 3 by 2 plus n minus 2 and then 3 by 2 plus n minus 1 now you can notice that uh, these two are actually equal because 1 by 2 minus 1 and 3 by 2 minus 2 are same this will also cancel out this will also cancel out this will also cancel out so so what we are left with is 1 by now this is just 2n plus 1 so this can actually be written as 1 by 2n plus 1 can be written as uh, rising factor of 1 by 2 by rising factor of 3 by 2 that's why uh, let's take two uh, let's multiply by two and then we have two root x and over here two n plus one yeah now sum from n equals to zero to infinity this rising factorial of one by four and two n one by two n plus one is rising factorial of uh, one by two by rising factorial of three by two uh, there are some other ways too from which we can find 
uh, these things which I want to expo which I want you to explore yourself. But uh, I've just shown the like evidence that it holds true. But the ways there are, yeah, which you, which you can discover on your own. S to the power n by n factorial. Now we know that this is just our two root x, and this is ordinary hypergeometric function of one by four, one by two, three by two x. So this is the solution to this problem. And if you want to evaluate it from zero to one, you can evaluate this from zero to one, yeah. And uh, this can also be so we be I basically solved it from the geometric defi from the sum definition of of hyper uh, geometric function. But you can also solve solve this problem from the integral definition of hyper geometric function, which you can try and let me know in the comment section. And yeah, I do believe that you have learned something new in this video. Yeah, about how to use hypergeometric functions to solve integrals like this. And yeah, these integrals are also solvable easily just by using binomial theorem and then hypergeometric function. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Look forward to seeing you in the upcoming videos too.